Hello students, welcome back to biology revision class. Today we are going to revise the remaining point on energy transformation and also we are going to start revision on the photosynthesis. Stay tuned. In a previous session we have seen the structure of ATP molecule, how it is uh, involved as an energy transferring molecule and how living organisms release ATP molecule inside their cells and coenzymes that are involved with these energy transformation molecules and the likes have been discussed and revised and today we're gonna continue on the respiration so here we're gonna look at what happens in glycolysis the reaction of glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm this process does not require oxygen. The reaction takes place in the glycolysis. Two molecules of ATP utilized in this reaction. So these uh, two molecules of ATP are used to phosphorylate each molecule of glucose. This makes glucose more reactive. Photo in the phosphorylation process, it is converted to another six carbon sugar. That is fructose 1,6 biphosphate. The fructose 1,6 biphosphate is a split into two molecules of three carbon sugar glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate GP. Each molecule of GP is then converted to pyruvate. When the production of the two molecules of ATP, that is by the substrate level phosphorylation and one molecule of reduced NAD, at the end of glycolysis, there is a net gain of two ATP molecules per molecule of glucose. Two molecules of reduced NAD are also produced per molecule of glucose. The molecules of pyruvate pass into mitochondria through carrier molecules, mitochondrial membrane. The overall reaction of the glycolysis here, there is uh, one molecule of glucose a breakdown and it gives uh, three molecules of carbon and finally uh, two molecules of reduced NADA. These are the uh, overall reactions as you can see in these uh, chemical reactions. So these are the end product of the glycolysis. Both these stage of respiration take place in the fluid matrix of mitochondria. In the link reaction, a model of pyruvate reacts with a molecule of coenzyme A to form a molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. In the reaction, hydrogen is lost and reduced. NAD is formed. Removing hydrogen from a molecule is called dehydrogenation. A carbon atom is lost to form carbon dioxide. Removing carbon from a molecule is called decarboxylation. So he, here you can see that the pyruvate in the link reaction, it become decarboxylated, removing of carbon and become a two carbon molecule. And it combined with coenzyme and it form acetyl coenzyme. The acetyl coenzyme A then reacts with a four carbon molecule called oxaloacetate. In the reaction, the acetyl CoA breaks down into a two carbon acetyl group, which react with a four carbon compound oxaloacetate to form a six carbon compound. The original coenzyme A molecule, which is used in further reaction with the other molecule of pyruvate. This is the first reaction of the Krebs cycle. What happens in the Krebs cycle? The two carbon group from acetyl coenzyme A reacts with a four carbon compound oxaloacetate to form a six carbon compound called citrate. Citrate then loses a carbon atom that is decarboxylated to form a five carbon compound and a carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct. The five carbon compound is then further decarboxylated to form a four carbon compound and carbon dioxide is again produced. A molecule of ATP is also produced by a substrate level phosphorylation. The four carbon compound undergoes several molecular transformation to regenerate the original four carbon compound, that is the oxaloacetate. And the cycle is complete and can begin again with oxaloacetate reacting with another molecule of acetyl CoA. As you can see in this slide with uh, circular pattern, these are the Krebs cycle, what happens to the on the stages of the Krebs cycle. Several reactions in the cycle, reduced NAD is produced and in just one reaction, reduced FAD is produced. This is the overall reaction, the chemical reaction as you can see in this slide. So the Krebs cycle uh, is a circular pattern and many molecules uh, reactions will take place. And what happens to the electron transport chain in chemiosmosis? This electron transport chain takes place in the mitochondrial internal 
structure. So the electron transport chain and the chemiosmosis together make up the process of oxidative phosphorylation. Whereas the reaction of the link reaction in the Krebs cycles takes place in the fluid matrix of the mitochondrion. The reaction of the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis take place on the inner mitochondrial membrane. On the Christi, the following events takes place. The hydrogen atom carried by the reduced NAD and reduced FAD are released and split into protons or hydrogen ion and electrons in the electron pass along a series of electron carriers to form transport chain. They lose energy as they pass from one carrier to the next. You can see these are many structures embedded on the internal structure of the mitochondria, in the internal membrane. Three of the electron carrier are proton pumps. You can see in this slide there are one, two, three pumps are there at the beginning of this structure. So proton pumps that move proton from the matrix of the mitochondria to the interior member space as the electrons are transferred through these three proton pumps. So there are three proton pumps that is in the matrix and the intermembrane space. In between these, the hydrogen ions are released. The energy they lose power the pump, which move the proton into the interior membrane space. Electrons from the reduced NAD makes this happen at all three pumps. The molecule that act as electron carrier in the electron transport chain are Reduce NAD dehydrogenase, also proton pumps. Ubiquinin, also a proton pump. And a number of carriers called the cytochromes. These are proteins that contain iron. Two of them form a complex that are the third proton pump. So all these are embedded in this structure of the mitochondrial membrane. At the end of the electron transport chain, the electrons combine with protons and with oxygen to form molecules of water. Because of these, oxygen is known as the terminal electron acceptor, whereas the reduced NAD is dehydrogenated and by the NAD dehydrogenase complex. Reduced FAD is dehydrogenated by ubiquinin. So electrons from reduced FAD only operates two of the three proton pumps. Because of the action of the proton pumps, protons accumulate in the interior membrane space, creating a higher concentration there than in the matrix or on the other side of the membrane. Proton gradient results in proton diffusing through the ATP synthase molecule down the concentration gradient, in other words, making the synthase rotor spin and produce ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Diffusion of hydrogen ions through ATP synthase is referred to as chemiosmosis. The oxidation of one molecule of reduced NAD results in six proton passing through ATP synthase, and so leads to the synthesis of the three molecules of ATP. The oxidation of one molecule of reduced fat results in four protons passing through ATP synthase, and so leads to the synthesis of just two molecules of ATP, the number of molecules of ATP produced. The model of aerobic respiration predicts that there will be a net yield of 38 molecule of ATP per molecule of glucose. This is the overall reaction of the chemical reaction. And here you do have the four process, the glycolysis, the link reaction, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. The four slides are embedded here in one slide, condensed into one slide. So you can see here, in practice, this is not achieved because some energy the equivalent of just over two molecules of ATP is used to drive proton pumps. The actual yield is about 36 molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose. The summary of the equation of aerobic respiration is, here under, you can see six molecules of glucose combined with six molecules of oxygen. This produces six molecules of water plus six molecules of carbon dioxide plus energy released. So this is the overall, the production of ATP during aerobic respiration, how it is uh, in this diagram represented glycolysis to up to that of electron transport chain. The slide is very simple to understand. And when you see these slides, you can easily get the points. So now let's uh, proceed to uh, a terminology called respirometers. What is respirometer? This is an apparatus uh, going to measure the volume of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So in the reaction of uh, respiration, six molecule of oxygen is consumed. 
to produce six molecules of carbon dioxide. So to measure this equal volume of uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide, there is an apparatus setup that we call it respirometers. This measures the volume of uh, oxygen utilized by the organism. Here is in the slide, there is an organism like insect inside a tube and that tube is extended with uh, pipette and inside glass there is a potassium hydroxide that is organic molecule which is used to trap the carbon dioxide molecule so that the organism when it breathes it consumes oxygen the carbon dioxide is absorbed by potassium hydroxide only the oxygen is consumed so water directly enters to the tube as equal to the, the, the water that is get into the tube is equal to the volume of the oxygen. Respirometer used to measure uh, how much oxygen is utilized by the organism. So respirometer comes in uh, several different forms, but they all work on the principle that oxygen is used in aerobic respiration and carbon dioxide is produced. The overall summary of the equation of the aerobic respiration of glucose is indicated over here. So this is the way how the respirometer is going to measure. So the respirometer placed underwater, as the volume inside the respirometer decreases, water will enter the pipette. The volume of water entering is equal to the volume of oxygen being used up. We can use this to measure the rate of respiration by measuring how much oxygen is used in a set period of time, say less 10 minutes, then working out a rate per minute. Now proceed to the other point of uh, respiration, what happens in the anaerobic pathway? This is respiration that does not require oxygen. What happens to respiration process in absence of oxygen? If there is no oxygen present, the final reaction of oxidative phosphorylation, where electrons and protons react with oxygen to form water, cannot take place. As a result, the electron transport chain come into halt. No proton are pumped and the action of ATP synthesis also stops. There is a further knock, knock on effect. If the electron transport chain does not function, NAD is not regenerated from reduced NAD and FAD is not regenerated from reduced FAD. Very quickly, the Krebs cycle and the link reaction come into a halt and both NAD and FAD are required in their oxidized form for the Krebs cycles to function. NAD is also required in the link reaction and so this comes to a halt also. However, glycolysis can continue even though it also requires NAD. This is because the reduced NAD formed during glycolysis can be regenerated under anaerobic conditions by converting the pyruvate into another product in reduction reaction. Reduced NAD supplies the hydrogen for this reduction and became oxidized itself. It is therefore regenerated and can be used again in glycolysis. Different organisms produce different fermentation end products. Animal cells produce lactate or lactic acid when they ferment glucose, yet that is in absence of oxygen. Yeast cells produce ethanol or ethyl alcohol, but both only produce two molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose. The summary of the reaction of both the yeast cell and animal cells. In animal cells, you have the lactic acid. In yeast cells, you have the ethanol. The byproduct in ethanol as a product, carbon dioxide and two ATP molecules is produced. In animal cell, there is a lactic acid plus two ATP molecules produced. So from one glucose molecule, two ATP molecules are produced and in absence of oxygen. So much ATP molecule is produced in ATP, but this has its own advantage for instance, if you take an aerobic respiration in animals, at least most of the time they use anaerobically respire and produce ATP molecule very quickly during the rest. Other organisms produce other fermentation products, many of which are made use of in different industries. So you have uh, organisms here that are used in different uh, industries. The pyruvic acid enters to a different fermentation process. So here uh, propionic bacterium uh, this is going to produce uh, the Swiss cheese and uh, you have also in wine industry in uh, cheese and others there are different products are produced by different fermentation processes. Uh, as you can see in this slide there are many uh, ways uh, the beer and wine, the cheese, the vinegars and 
cheese of different types uh, be produced by different fermentation mechanisms using different kinds of organisms. Mostly the bacteria are involved in this fermentation process. So they follow up their own fermentation process and most of them are involved in industries and producing useful products for the whole human life. So here you can see that uh, what happens uh, finally to substance can be used as energy sources. And as so far we have seen that glucose as a source of energy source in producing ATP molecules, both in fermentation or in aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. But not only glucose are respired, but lipids and proteins can also be used. These are ways how they link to the Krebs cycle and the glycolysis. In this uh, slide, you can easily look at how they have their own passes. And in proteins, you have the ammonia and glucose you have finally water and lipids you have carbon dioxide is a, as a byproduct you can see so three of them the glucose the lipids and the proteins can be served as respiratory substrates not only always uh, glucose are involved sometimes lipids and proteins can be involved in production of energy so lipids and proteins are converted into substrate that can enter the aerobic respiration pathway at some point. The metabolism of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates converges on the Krebs cycle. They meet at Krebs cycle. Students now for session for revision questions and pay attention and answer the questions uh, that follow. The first question is the significance of storing energy in a small molecule such as ATP in living system is A, to manage their energy budget efficiently, B, to prevent themselves from burning due to tremendous release of energy. C, to release only the amount of energy their cells needed. If your answer is D, students, you are correct. Second question, ATP is the energy currency of the cell because A, it is nucleotide, B, it is a polar molecule, C, it contains energy-rich phosphate bonds. D, it contains sugar. The answer to this question, student, is C. If you have said C, you're correct. Question number three. Which statement is not true of pyruvate? Choice A, it contains three carbon atoms. B, it feeds into the citric acid cycle. C. It is the end product of glycolysis. D. It gets reduced during fermentation. The wrong answer for this is, if you have said D, you're correct. Question number four. The hydrogen ion and the electron released from the intermediate compound during glycolysis. A. Reduced NAD to NADH. B. Reduced NAD ion. C. Oxidized NAD ion to NADH. D. Oxidized NADH to NAD ion. So the hydrogen ion and the electron release from the intermediate compound during the glycolysis used to reduce the reduced ion, the NAD ion to NADH. If your answer is A, you are correct. And finally, the last question. Which of the following are the most commonly used electron carrier in the Krebs cycle? A. Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. B. Flavin adenine dinucleotide. C. NAD ion and FAD ion. D. All. If your answer is D, you are correct. Students, so far, we have seen on respiration, the Krebs cycle, the linked reaction, the glycolysis and electron transport chain. Now we proceed our revision to photosynthesis. Now, what is photosynthesis? Obviously, from your previous background, this is a mechanism by which green plants synthesize their own food. So in depth and detail, we will see in this revision session. So in photosynthesis, light energy is used in a series of reactions that lead to the synthesis of a range of organic molecules. The energies that enter the system as light 
is now held in the organic molecules produced. It is now chemical energy. So the light energy that is interest to the green plant finally converted into a chemical energy. When energy is changed from one form to another, it is, we call it transduced. We have mentioned last time, so several uh, energies have been converted from one form to another, from light energy, for instance, into heat energy, or from mechanical energy to motion energy and the likes. So energy is converted always from one form to another. This takes place in a series of reaction called the light dependent reaction. So energy transformation in green plants that we call it transduce, we call it or transduction. So this is takes place in the light dependent reaction. Light energy is absorbed by special photosensitive pigments such as chlorophyll in the chloroplasts. The light dependent reaction takes place in the membranes of the thylakoids in the chloroplast. These are the structure of the chloroplast, uh, the green and uh, light green structures. The liquid stroma in the site of the light independent reaction. So the light uh, dependent and the light independent reaction separately occurs on the chloroplast section in which carbohydrates are synthesized, that is in the light independent reactions. Chemical reactions like this takes place most effectively in solution, rather than if some were fixed in membranes. The chlorophyll and other photosensitive pigment molecules are arranged in a special photosystems that are linked to electron transport chain, ETC. The molecule of photosynthesis and the electron transport chain are fixed in the membranes of the thylakoids. This makes the process much more efficient than if they were just floating around in a solution. So here you can see that the structure of the electron micrograph structure of the chlorophyll and the three-dimensional structure of the chloroplasts. What is the structure of a photosystem? A photosystem consists of a number of pigment molecules all clustered around one particular chlorophyll molecule called the reaction center molecule. This cluster of pigment molecules is called an antenna complex. Only the reaction center molecule is positioned next to the electron transport chain. So here you give all these sections have been explained. The electron transfer, proton, antenna pigment molecules, transferring energy, the reaction center molecules are here in this slide. Energy absorbed by other molecule in the photosystem is transferred to the reaction center molecule, where light dependent reactions begin. Different pigment molecules in the antenna complex can absorb different wavelengths of light, making the whole system more efficient. The pigments in the antenna complex include chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids. The reaction center molecule is always chlorophyll A. The range of wavelengths of each molecule absorbs is the absorption spectrum. The absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids. You have here green lines are referring to chlorophyll A, the orange uh, chlorophyll B, and the red ones are the carotenoids in this section. How the maximum graph showing the absorption spectrum of their wavelengths of light. Each of the chlorophylls have their own wavelengths to absorb that type of uh, light energy. So notice how between them they absorb most wavelengths visible light, except 500 nanometer to 600 nanometer green. Plants are green because these wavelengths are reflected, not absorbed. The action spectrum for different wavelengths of light. Notice the dip in the green region of the spectrum, action spectrum, is the photosynthesis effectiveness of each wavelength. So each wavelength uh, do have their own effectiveness that goes to the action spectrum. The light dependent reaction uses light energy to drive the synthesis of two molecules that will in turn drive the light independent reaction. These two molecules are when ATP. This provides energy for the reactions and the second one is the reduced NAD, NADP. This provides the hydrogen ions for a key reduction reaction. So this is the light dependent reaction in this slide. There is photosystem one and two. Photosystem two is 680. Photosystem one is 700. Uh, the wavelengths of the lights they absorb. NADP is very similar to NAD that is used in respiration and it has the same function, transporting hydrogen ions. So uh, photosystem one and photosystem two, what's going on in these two systems? 
Number one, electrons in chlorophyll molecule in photosystem two are excited by the energy in, in, photo, in the photons of light. They became more energetic because of the extra energy. They escape from chlorophyll and pass to an electron acceptor or the primary acceptor. So in this slide, the photosystem two, when light strikes, electrons ejected from it and goes to primary acceptors. And it goes down to the many carrier molecules, the cytochromes and ubiquinin. The second one is the condition created in the chloroplast causes the following reaction to occur. The water molecules split and oxygen is released with the release of hydrogen ions and electrons. The light dependent splitting of water is called photolysis. The electron replaces those lost from the chlorophyll molecule. The third reaction in the photosystem one and two is the primary electron acceptor passes the electron to the next molecule in an electron transport chain, that is plastoquinin, or PQ for short. The electron then pass along a series of cytochromes, similar to those in the mitochondrial electron transport chain. And finally, to plastocyan, plastocyanin, that is PC, is the last carrier in the chain. The electron lose energy as they are passed from one carrier to the next. The force, one of the molecule in the cytochrome complex is a proton, or hydrogen ion pump as electrons are transferred to and then transferred from this molecule the energy the energy they lose powers the pump which move proton from the stroma of the chloroplast to the space inside the thylakoid this leads to an accumulation of a protons inside the thylakoid which drives the chemiosmotic synthesis of atp number five process going on is still in photosystem and photosystem two. Electrons in chlorophyll molecule in photosystem one are excited, at this photosystem absorbs photons of light and escape from the molecule. They are replaced by the electrons that have been passed down the electron transport chain from photosystem two. Then number six, process going on in photosystem one and two. The electrons then pass along a second electron transport chain involving feridoxine, for short FD, and NADP reductase. At the end of this electron transport chain, they can react with protons or hydrogen ion and NADP in the stroma of the chloroplast to form reduced NADP. Photosynthetic unit in general. Photosynthetic unit is an arrangement of molecules capable of carrying out all reactions in light dependent stage of photosynthesis. So the detail process, as you can see in this slide, how these uh, photosynthetic units are clustered together. A photosynthetic unit is a unit of pigment, electron carriers, and ATP synthase that is capable of carrying out all the reactions in the light-dependent stage of photosynthesis. So in the photosynthetic unit, there are three structures. These are the unit of pigment, electron carriers, and ATP synthase. The formation of the ATP in, in the way described above is called non-cyclic photophosphorylation. This is because the photophosphorylation or formation of ATP is light dependent. The electron loss from chlorophyll are not recycled in any way. Plants sometimes generate ATP by cyclic photophosphorylation. In cyclic photophosphorylation, only photosystem one is used no oxygen and no re reduced NADP are formed. Here you can see the electron loss from the chlorophyll molecule and return to it, hence the name cyclic. So in this slide you can see as the light strikes this chlorophyll molecule, electrons are ejected, go down different carrier molecules and with there is a production of ATP molecule and the electrons return back to again the chlorophyll molecule. So photosystem is independently working sometimes. The process is usually only happens when sugar cannot be synthesized for some reason, such as, let's say, lack of carbon dioxide. In lack of carbon dioxide, only photosystem one is working. In cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation, ATP is produced because there is an accumulation of protons, hydrogen ions, in the interior of a thylakoid. This creates a concentration gradient between the thylakoid interior and the stroma of the chloroplasts. Protons move down this concentration gradient through ATP synthase, causing the rotor to spin, just as in mitochondria during respiration.
So students come to the first session of the photosynthesis with some reminding revision questions and pay attention to answer these questions. Question number one, where in plant cell does crop cycle take place? A, nucleus, B, cytoplasm, C, mitochondria, D, chloroplast. If your answer is C, you are correct. Question number two. Which of the following is not true about photosystem two? Its reaction center molecule is 680. It passes its excited electron to photosystem one. C, the energy loss from the excited electron reduced NADP. D, it replenishes its lost electron from photolysis of water. The wrong answer is here C. If you have said C, you're correct. Question number three. Where does the light dependent reaction of photosynthesis occur in the chloroplasts? A, in the thylakoid membrane, B, in the fluid stroma, C, in all parts of the chloroplast, D, in the stomatal opening. The answer to this question is A. If you have said A, you're correct. Question number four. Which of the following event does not happen during light phase of photosynthesis? Reduced NAD, B, reduced carbon dioxide, C, photolysis of water, D, ATP regeneration. The answer to this question is B, reduction of carbon dioxide. Question number five. The process of photosynthesis denotes A. Requires photosynthetic pigment B. Converts light energy to chemical energy C. Use carbon dioxide and water as a raw material D. All If your answer is D, you are correct Dear students, this is all what we have for today. We will finalize the revision on energy transformation on our next session. Till then, goodbye.